Now more than ever, Sheldon, it is appropriate to say, let's go, because we had the best episode of the season, I think. I'm curious to know what you think, but first of all, my name is John Shidley Hill. And I am a very sick Sheldon Alexander, and if in case you hear it, when I'm talking at certain points, yes, I do have a halls in my mouth right now, and I don't care. <laughs> Halls get at us for that sponsorship. That's true. That's true. I actually uh, went to the doctor yesterday because I've also been struggling with the cold, and she's like, "So, like, you sound really plucked up." I'm like, "No, that's just my voice." But thank you. <laughs> um, uh. And this is you killed it. The podcast about the challenge. Looking for that sweet Hall sponsorship money. Can you tell that winter is arriving in Canada? Yeah, right? I mean, <laughs> something's going on. And, you know, something was going on on the challenge as well. Le challenge? It was, an, I thought, an excellent episode. I mean, this is what we've been asking for all season. I mean, I guess in fairness, we didn't have a competition. We just had two eliminations. Yeah. But, like, not house drama, just politics drama. Yes. It was a good one. This was basically the Zach and uh, Amanda show, right? Yeah, the Zach and Amanda show. I mean, early on in this season, you and I had pegged Zach and Amanda as arguably the team to beat. Mm-hmm. And I think, I'm going to speak for us, I think we both like Zach and Amanda. Zach has grown on me, I should qualify. I've always liked Amanda. Mm-hmm. Zach has grown on me a lot. He's clearly settling down in his personal life. Um, But they've got a problem on this season. And that is, as Zach explains off the top of the episode, the house basically can be broken evenly down the middle with his alliance, which is, well, him, and theoretically Amanda, Johnny Bananas and Tony, Car Maria and Marie, and on the other side is the Lavender Ladies Young Bucks Alliance, which, to give a, a throwback reference, seems very much like the corporate ministry from WWE circa 2000, when the corporation led by Vince McMahon <laughs> and the Ministry of Darkness led by The Undertaker sort of became one giant stable. I have no idea what you're Not talking about. Not a high about. point. Someone, I'm sure someone knows what I'm talking about that's listening to this podcast. You were just speaking sure there's a completely different language. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there is a, a thin intersection of the Venn diagrams of 90s wrestling fans and the challenge fans. Totally agree. But anyway, but anyway he says that Jose and Davon are sitting in the middle. Mm-hmm. Uh, where they don't have uh, an allegiance to either side of the house. Yep. Uh, And Zach talks about how solid his alliance is and makes the very fair point that he and Tony ran the house in Vendettas, which is true, they did. It wasn't even close. And if listeners want to go back and listen to old episodes of You Killed It, we talked about that quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought he did a very good job of breaking this all down. Uh, and then we've got a scene with Car Maria speaking with Jose and Davon, and Jose tells her that people are getting for Johnny and Tony. Yes. So she points out that in confessional, her alliance with Johnny, Tony, and Zach, the numbers are dwindling. Mm-hmm. I agree with her, except that I would add the caveat: they never really had the numbers. <laughs> like they're always outnumbered. That's very true. That is very true. Um. um Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to say, like, it, it's an interesting dynamic in the house right now, right? Because they're trying to figure out, okay, if you're Davon and Jose, who should you choose? Like, which side? As I was watching it, I was trying to think, if I'm Davon and Jose, who would I choose? You know what I mean? And I, I it was tough because I thought, you know, at the end of the day, if you go to the Lavender Lady side, you're on the bottom by far, right? Whereas... The other thing you got to think about is, can you take out? Who do you have to take out, right? Yeah. And if you go to the side of, but like, you don't want to have to take out Bananas and and Tony. Do you know what I mean? 
And if you go to no, the Lavender no. Lady side, you're going to get thrown under the bus for Tony and like as soon as Tony and uh, Bananas are gone in this like hypothetical, you're up next, even though you are on their side. I think that really what what this means is if they back Johnny's alliance, mm-hmm. it, they get to hang around longer because they have more utility. Like they're more useful to Johnny Bananas's alliance for longer. But at the end of the day, they're still going to be on the outside looking in. Yes, definitely. 1000%. And in the, the- they just be because they're a smaller alliance, they need them longer. That's it. That's the only benefit of backing Johnny Bananas. For sure. I also think too, it's one of those things where you start looking at the game as the numbers start dwindling and you got to start thinking, okay, who would you have to go into eliminations against? And I still think that, yeah. you know, you don't want to have to go in an elimination against Tony and Bananas if you're Davon and Jose. But, yes. Uh, this whole episode, though, was one huge, like, as you said, politics session. Right? Yeah. But I love that. Like, this is the sort of thing I'm super into. Okay. Um, Kara, Johnny, and Tony interrupt a, a late night outdoor workout session, <laughs> uh, which looks fucking miserable uh to basically agree that they're gonna vote in hunter and ashley yes Uh, um so that's two votes for hunter and ashley um then we flip to god help us the redemption house uh (laughs) yes Uh, can i co-sign on a sigh is that possible yeah i was just so and as soon as it was funny too how they started the the thing because it was Kaylee talking about her eyebrows, and Cam says yes. those are Instagram brows. I was just like, "Are we not?" This sums up. Are we this. not saying on fleek anymore? Is on fleek not an option? I don't think so. I think oh. that that moment in time is over. I think. I liked. I liked on fleek. Stop it! <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> um, but yeah, as soon as the redemption house pops up, I'm just like, uh, "Get out of here!" Like, I don't care about your eyebrows. I don't care about your Instagram, and I definitely don't care about Kyle and fucking Polly still pretending as if they're going to actually fight. It's so ridiculous Damn. to me. It's so boring. you you just sounded so much like a Nas uh, verse. <laughs> like I don't care for your Instagram. I don't care for your eyebrows. I'm I'm into it. I've been listening to a lot of Nas lately. Okay. Um, but for those who need the recap. Ugh, in confessional, Polly is talking about how mad he is at Kyle because, as we saw in last week's, on next week's episode, and you and I discussed this, he is trying to repaint what happened as Kyle getting mad that he was friends with a girl that Kyle didn't want to be with anymore, which, as I said last week, is not what happened. <laughs> but I don't want to get back into it. Did you find it um, interesting that Polly said? Hindsight is twenty twenty, but maybe I shouldn't have come in with the girlfriend. Yes. So he his exact words were, "So I could have fucked Kara," <laughs> which, first of all, super classy way to speak about both Kara and Danielle, his girlfriend. Yeah. Second of all, Kyle says he regrets nothing. Like, really, dude, you don't regret uh, not speaking to Kara for two months when you went to Bangkok or. Vietnam or wherever it was he went you don't regret sleeping with both Faith and Ashley in the same bed on camera like there's really nothing that you have learned from this and then he says to Polly's girl if you're watching your boyfriend is a pussy although I hear she's hot so I might try to fuck her these are yeah. just two classy individuals they I my note on this section is they are both assholes. <laughs> like I've seen people defend Polly online. I have seen people defend Kyle. They're both dicks. <laughs> like that's all there is to it. And and if you need further evidence, Polly says one of the, the douchiest things I've ever heard. Are you ready for this? I know you heard it, but we can go to a martial arts studio and fight there. <laughs> Who talks like that? Uh, 
Uh, we could get together and practice the art of karate. Like, come on. You don't, like... <laughs> it's just I don't so know how terrible. This... Because, it, again... You don't... The way that these two were going or... back and forth, though, it was the worst, right? And at one point, Kyle's like, if you want to get it on in an elimination, I don't care. We can do that. If you want to fight right now, we can do that. And it's like, stop it. Like, I, I, I actually feel bad for Brad. Yeah. Which is something I never thought I, I would say. But I feel bad for Brad. Brad Brad is the voice of reason here. He is. And calms Kyle down and makes the point like, hey, we got to win that money. <laughs> and like mm -hmm. being this angry doesn't help. Nope. Um, they're just assholes. Like, honestly, you don't make an appointment to fight. <laughs> a martial arts is there are they supposed to show up in their gi like their pajamas to do it like come on man it's just so pathetic it. like nobody believes you guys are actually gonna fight right it's just so ridiculous to me like I, i'd rather not see this pretend whole scene where you guys are gonna fight when you know brad's holding you guys back but he's not really holding anyone back yeah i don't know it's ridiculous it, if you want if you want to fight you fight and, like, the longer you put off a fight, the more likely it is you're going to calm down. Mm -hmm. So, you don't, right? Like, if you want to go, you want to go. You guys clearly don't want to fight. <laughs> Let's all move on. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Anyway, back in the, let's call it the exciting house. Yes. Uh, Nelson and Davon have discovered that they grew up uh both in inglewood i assume california always up to no they went good. to the same yes i've heard that i've heard <laughs> i've heard that people from inglewood are often up to no good um the it turns out they went to the same hold on do you think there's a school there, do you think there's like a young buck listening right now and they're like what does that a ref what is that a reference of no right oh my god no right like people, no like okay. that's just making sure no 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 just making sure Let's move on. You know what? No, no, no. You really just brought me down, but you're probably right. There's probably some some child <laughs> listening to this that is not familiar. Uh, anyways, uh, yes. Let's get back to the to the Amanda and Zach show. Yes. Well, but first we have to establish Nelson and Davon oh, yes, yes, from yes. the same hood, um, and N Nelson making a play to Davon like, "Hey, you should join our alliance because mm -hmm. like." we're going to be straight up with you. And you know what? I, I do believe him. I do think Nelson, for all his idiocy, is a straight up guy. Yeah. Um, and he's... But I have to also point something out that's interesting to me. So Davon says that this is like the first time that she and Nelson have really spoken. Yeah. And, and like at this point, they've been in the house, what, two weeks? Gotta be a while, right? Yeah, so they're they're only now realizing that they are from the like same part of the world. Um and later, just to skip something, Davon points out or sorry, Ashley points out that she and Davon have never spoken to each other until like this episode. Which makes me wonder, like, how little is Davon speaking to people? Like <laughs> it's a, <laughs> It's a relatively small house. Well, as, anyway. as we found out, though, right? Like, everyone's clicked up, so you only really chill with your people, and that's it, right? That's right. Um, but someone she is speaking with is uh, Johnny Bananas. Mm -hmm. She and Jose are having a conversation with Bananas, and he makes, I think, the very valid point that the Lavender Ladies are looking for a fall guy. Mm -hmm. And the reason, of course is if Jose and Davon vote against Bananas and Tony, the Lavender Ladies are expecting that Jose and Davon will be the ones to go in against Bananas and Tony. Exactly. And he's right. He is right. Totally. 10,000%. That's what's going on. Right? Like 10,000%. I should, I should point out that uh, last night on Twitter, Davon said that she had been working on bananas for ages mm -hmm. that she had been you know not like talking game but being you know giving the morning nod hey how's it going mm -hmm. and just 
just establishing a little bit of trust. Okay. Getting it going. Okay. You know, pumping the handle. Um, then, this is where shit really starts to pop off. <laughs> Zach and Tony, late at night. You can tell it's a like late at night bullshit session. Yeah, and Amanda seems a, a little poolside. nice. She might have had a yeah, few drinks. Yeah, she does. She's feeling no pain. Yes. Zach and Tony are just talking, sort of talking in broad strokes, talking about how they dominated uh, Vendetta's. Yeah. And how that they have to go into turbo savage mode <laughs> for the rest of the season. And then I'm what? Basically though? talking about how. Sorry. No, saying and then what? Amanda just comes in guns blazing. She just comes flying out of the house. She comes out of the house with a rocket on her back. <laughs> what I really think in hindsight is that she was drinking inside and that she and uh, Smashly came outside to hack a dart. Mm -hmm. And on the way to the dart, on the way to the smoke, they were like opening the door and like caught a snippet of the conversation. <laughs> As you pointed out, they were perhaps into the cups. Mm hmm. And off to the races we go. Amanda starts jawjacking Tony, jawjacking Zach. Johnny Bananas is like on a balcony overlooking because he always likes to. He's watching. Keep his ear. Yeah, he likes to watch. Keeps he his likes ear to, keep to the his... streets. <laughs> yes, exactly. And Zach and Amanda have a big argument outside. Yeah. Um, and and basically she says, "How can you trust Tony?" When he threw Johnny Bananas under the bus. So here's the crux of this argument to me, right? This whole argument centers around the fact that Amanda is trying to say her friends will never put her in, but your friends will. Now, mm -hmm. that's an interesting theory, but do you believe that theory? Um, I don't, and just because... I don't think Tony would throw this, him in. I don't think Tony would throw him in. I sincerely don't think Tony would throw it in, throw Zach in. I think one of the elements of Tony betraying Johnny Bananas last season was that Johnny Bananas always condescends to Tony. Yes. And calls him, like, little brother and, like, oh, I'm showing you the ropes and all this. Mm -hmm. And I think that Zach and Tony just have more in common. Like, they're of a similar age. Mm -hmm. They came up in the same era of the show. And there's... They're on an even playing field. Exactly. It's not leader and follower. They're like equals. Yeah. They're partners. It's a partnership. Yeah. So, so, um, I don't think Tony would stab him in the back. That said, although I think Amanda showed a lot of trust, uh, uh, like showed that she was loyal. The Lavender Ladies mathematically at some point have to turn on each other. Exactly. But here's the other thing too, right? And and you touched on it earlier. But the reason why Tony is not going to say Zach's name is because he doesn't have that many alliances in the house. So, of course, no. he's not going to say that name. But if you go to the Lavender Ladies, as you just said, at some point they're going to have to turn on each other. And there is no hierarchy, right? And if you think about it, if there was a hierarchy, you could argue that Zach and Amanda are below. They're like the lowest because of Zach's ties to Tony. No? Yeah. Right? So because of Zach's ties to Tony, you could argue that they would be at the bottom of the totem pole in the Lavender Ladies Alliance. No? Yeah. I I agree with you. I was on Zach's side this whole 100%. time. Like, this whole argument, I was on Zach's side. And I just think a, a lot of it, too, was Amanda was drunk. And, you know, it was kind of annoying. And as they're talking to each other, she's not even making sense. Like, she was saying, did Nelson and uh, did Nelson throw us in? Nelson and Shane throw us in last time? And, and uh, Zach's like, no. But did Bananas and Tony throw us in? And then she didn't even have an answer for that. She's just like, don't yell no. at me. Turn, like, why are you being so loud? And it's like, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you're just losing this argument, right? You have nothing else to say. So it, it was and an interesting thing. Here's a 
a problem, a situation that they're in that they have to figure out, and it's tough, they're in a unique position where it's not actually to their advantage to be winning competitions. And I didn't realize that until now. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, Zach dominated last season by winning competitions, always being in the Troika and just throwing people in over and over and over again, Mm -hmm. which worked for that. It doesn't work here because they can't agree on who to vote for. Yes. Beyond voting for Davon and Jose over and over again. And, like, they didn't... Like, I agree. I see both Zach and Amanda's positions. Mm -hmm. But they needed to get on the same page somehow. Yeah. Whether it was even flip a coin. Yeah, exactly. It it really just made no sense that they didn't think this all through. Like, they didn't have a rational conversation. Right? Like, Amanda was just super drunk. Zach was just firmly in his corner in terms of what he was going to do the entire time. And that was that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, in the aftermath of that, uh, Davon is putting in work, and she tells Ashley that she's going to vote along with the Lavender Ladies. Yes. And as I already said, Ashley notes, this is the first time that Davon spoke to me, but great. <laughs> like, <laughs> this sounds good to me. Yep. Uh, which begged the question, who exactly are Davon and Jose going to vote for? So we have the actual voting. Mm-hmm. Zach and Amanda vote for Jose and Davon as the only team they don't have an alliance with. Exactly. So they burn the their vote. Lavender. Yeah, they essentially burn their vote. The Lavender ladies all vote for Tony and Bananas. Mm-hmm. Cara Maria and Marie, Car- Team Cara Marie, <laughs> vote for Hunter and Ashley and say they're willing to do their own dirty work to take them out, which I like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then Johnny and Tony uh, also vote for Hunter and Ashley. Jose and Davon, we don't know. They didn't show how they voted. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when we get to Armageddon, it quickly becomes apparent that... Jose and Davon also voted for Hunter and Ashley. Dun, dun, dun. So it's three votes versus three votes. And then Zach and Amanda. And again, voted we have for to emphasize Jose and Davon. We need to emphasize this point, right? Like the why this is a smart move for Davon and Jose is because if they take that pick and the lavender ladies that vote there, the assumption is that it's not going to be one of the Lavender Ladies that gets selected to go in against Tony mm-hmm. and Bananas. That's why it's a big move for them to not do that. Yeah. It was a great move. It makes sense. They're hiding behind the cover mm-hmm. of other votes. Yes. Yeah. So and... basically we, we find out that Davon lies. It's a tie. And then we get more Zach of the Zach and Amanda show. Because they can't make a decision. Yes. And they're just going back and forth. And they have to decide which team is going in. Is it going to be Bananas and Tony or is it going to be Hunter and Ashley? And they're going back and forth. And TJ says, if you can't decide, then you guys are going in. And there's a bit of an argument. Johnny Bananas is in there trolling. It turns into a pretty crazy scene. But did you see? Did you see it coming? Like what ended up happening? Did you see what happened? Did you see it coming? That Zach just basically stepped off the stage and says fine we're going in yeah no i did not see that coming i was stunned and they were in their street clothes too yes amanda's in like jeans yeah it was it was crazy like i didn't see that coming at all and you know zach basically just says fuck it we're going in amanda doesn't really believe it but she doesn't know what to do either and the way that they edited this scene to have it go to commercial break with Amanda kind of standing there shocked. And side note, the cutaways to all the other teams in shock as Zach walked up was amazing. Oh, so good. Everyone was so stunned, good. Right? But the way that they cut it, I kind of thought, oh, maybe this will make Amanda cave. And Amanda will just mm-hmm. go to Zach's side because she doesn't want to go in. I actually thought that might happen when they came back from commercial break. But that did not happen. But we did get scenes where we saw Hunter and Ashley and then Bananas and Tony answer the question, should they have gone in 
and just stepped in so that Zach and Amanda didn't have to go in. What do you think of that? Do you think one of them should have just said, no, you can't do that. I'm going in? Um, I mean, I, th- I mean, I thought about it because it was discussed as an option. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I guess. See, I, it's interesting because I, mean, I don't think that that's why Zach decided he was going in. Right. Like, I just think he was going in off principle. Right. And so, yes, if that's what you're doing for principle, then cool. Right. Like you already know what you're doing by risking going in. Right. Yeah. So I don't think they should have. But that's up to you. That's like a personal decision at the same time. Right. Like, I don't think I can say, uh, Tony Bananas, you guys should just volunteer to go in because you should also never volunteer to go in. Right. But I understand why Zach did it in this instance. Yeah, I mean, what do you make of you know, take a, I liked it. I and like you know what we're gonna get to this discussion anyway, so we might as well get it now. I respect both Zach and Amanda. Mm-hmm. Um, I, a lot of people on Twitter uh, were making the point last night that Zach's an asshole, that he can't work with a woman, that he's sexist. Uh, Laurel was weighing in, Amanda was weighing in, and maybe there is an element of sexism that I'm not seeing. But in my mind, it boils down to Zach and Amanda both having the same stance. Yeah. That they don't want to betray their friends. Yeah. Um, And it's, for them as a team, it's an untenable position. Mm -hmm. But they're, like, I respect their values. I didn't really understand the whole like Amanda being like, oh, you think that you run our team and just because I'm a girl. Like I never took it as that at all. I honestly just took it as he was stuck in his way that, listen, I'm not going to say Tony's name. That's not going to happen. So I'm going in. Like I didn't think of it as like him running the team or him trying to belittle her because he's a woman like or because she's a woman. I didn't understand that at all. I didn't get it. I mean, that maybe that's something that we just haven't seen, that he's been, like, taking credit for their victories. Things like that. I, I don't know. Yeah. But I do know that, like, in this isolated incident, I agree with both of them. Yeah. Neither one of them wants to betray their friends. Yeah. That's admirable. And Amanda did and say they on, both have, Amanda did say on Twitter that everyone, including production thought that i was gonna cave and vote ashley and hunter i refused to get i refused to go against my word period yeah and like i respect them for both refusing to break their word but that's why i don't get why she's mad at him right because don't you understand where he's coming from then like if you don't want to go against your word and he doesn't want to go against his word then how can you be so mad at him for making that decision and saying that he's going in yeah i didn't understand that she basically, in my mind, she got G checked. Like she said, I'm not going to budge. And he said, fine. Okay. I'm not going to budge either. Yeah. Let's do this thing. Yeah. And, and like, it must be frustrating for them because they must have thought that they had gotten out of the situation by voting for Jose and Davon. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Like they must have thought like, okay, well, you know, we'll figure this out when like, we'll cross this bridge when we get there. Mm-hmm. And suddenly the bridge is there and they're like, oh shit. <laughs> I think some of Amanda's anger is probably just shock. Yes. Definitely. And frustration and just like the stress of the situation. And she's wearing jeans, like she's in her street clothes. Mm-hmm. <coughs> like it would not be great. So then they end up picking Jose and Davon to go against them because no one voted for them. Yep. So they get their pick. And uh, it makes sense, again, because they don't have an alliance with Jose and Davon. Like, they're the only team that they're not on some sort of page with. But Davon gives an impassioned speech <laughs> about how tired she is about getting called out. Yeah. Uh, and that, you know, it's bullshit. She's sick of this. She's so tired of always having to go in and then people getting mad at them when people don't want to talk to her anyways. But I like how she flipped it and then said, you know what? 
we're just going to go in. We're going to get this money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're going to take it to the bank. <laughs> right? She's going off. I loved it. And she at one point said something like, none of you are willing to actually go against us. Mm -hmm. And then Hunter and Ashley are like, hey, you had an opportunity, but you voted like you voted us in when you could have voted against Johnny and Tony, which is a fair point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this is also Hunter and Ashley are being dumb in this instance. They should just keep their mouth shut because exactly. they just dodged a bullet. Yep. Exactly. Right, like, like, don't be salty that you got voted against when you're not going into elimination. Mm -hmm. Just be like, whew, that was close. And, like, one of the teams that voted against us is in the danger zone now. Like, kind of worked out. The people who this all really worked out for were Hunter and Ashley and Johnny and Tony. More so Hunter and Ashley. Because... Coming out to some epic music. Dun, dun, dun. Devin and Corey are introduced as mercenaries. And Devin and Corey would firmly slot into the Team Young Buck <laughs> Lavender Ladies Alliance. Yes, they would. And it's also and, a cool twist, too, right? Like, just the fact that they have to beat both teams to get in. I like that. Yeah. Because it's more fair given that they're coming into the game so late. I mean, I to be honest, I don't think it's fair in terms of a twist. Like, I feel like that's a way easier, and especially for such a strong team, right? Like, I feel like that's a way easy path to the final, let's say. But, you know, within the circumstances, to make them have to beat both teams, that is a, a little, it's, 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 a good, it's a good compromise, let's say. Yeah. 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 Um... They, we had asked this previously, and they finally explained how Corey and Devin count as vendettas. Yes. And I totally did not remember Corey sending Devin straight off Dirty 30. Like, did you remember No, that? I totally I forgot. Did not. I totally forgot about that. I did not remember that at all. That was not in my memory bank. But here they are. Uh, and now that Corey has a daughter with Cheyenne, he is fully on the, this money could go for my daughter bit, which as pioneered by Tony Raines. <laughs> um, and in confessional, Corey says that he and Devin have never really been on the same page. And Devin says likewise mm -hmm. in confessional. And I have to point out, I mean, I just said it, but their rivalry is so mild that you and I and none of our listeners could even remember how or why they dislike each other. Yeah. So I think they'll be okay. I think exactly. I think that between us and our listeners and our collective memory, they'll be able to bury the past as no one can even remember the past. So Yeah. I think I think they'll be okay. And I really like what Devin says in Confessional. That he's going to be the mastermind, and Corey is going to be the murderer when it comes to competition. Whatever and that's, that means, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure that Corey's actually that great in eliminations, but that they're going to be a very dangerous team, and I agree with that. I do think they're going to be a very dangerous team. Yeah. No, it's it's an interesting it's an interesting group for sure, and you got to think about the fact of, you know the other strong teams that are still in the house it's basically them mm -hmm. and bananas and tony no yeah like when you really break yeah. it down who's still left in the house so it'll be interesting to see for sure but i was really just interested in the whole like you know amanda didn't even have like clothes to change into what did you think of mm -hmm. this challenge though or this elimination i should say uh, I liked the concept of it, but it's, I don't think they ended up doing it as it was designed. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like, obviously, uh, we should explain. So each team has a long hemp rope, like a, a pirate rope. <laughs> and hanging from the rope are nine medallions. They call them medallions. To me, they just like look like clipboards. Hanging from strings. Yeah. 
and the two partners have to dangle from the rope on either end and just sh by shaking the rope they have to knock free the nine all medallions. nine medallions yeah. there's nine medallions and Amanda and Zach are killing it early on they got off to a they great get start out, they get out to a quick 7-2 to two lead but then they sort of stall out, and at one point, one of the medallions smokes Zach in the face. Yes. In his effort to shake it, just smokes it. And Amanda keeps making the point that she only weighs 110 pounds. Mm -hmm. Zach probably weighs 240. Something like that, yeah. So, like, she just doesn't have the horsepower to sh to really shake the rope on her end mm -hmm. and i don't know if i if i had a guess i'd say devin and Corey are both in the 190 range right so like some total as a team they're heavier and their weight is more evenly distributed mm -hmm. so what both teams end up doing is they will fall off the rope climb back up the ladder and then Just jump on the rope jumping. in unison yeah yeah and then purposely falling off. Yeah. This is a great way to get a concussion. <laughs> I know they're wearing helmets, but like helmets don't necessarily prevent concussions if you're getting whiplash, right? Like a concussion is your brain bouncing off your skull. Mm -hmm. The sudden jarring impact of falling on your back and you're going to get the wind knocked out of you. Like this would have been terrible to do. They probably, I know they're landing on pads, but still, damn. So a question for you. Did you happen yes. to notice that some of the early confessionals during this episode, Zach's wearing makeup to cover up the bruising? I did not notice I, that. I did wow, notice good it, yeah. eye. Um, because I was just thinking like when they finally did show him with the bruising, I was like, oh, wait a second. And then I went back and I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm going to point something out to you because you are not the only observant one on this podcast. Definitely not. Do you know why Amanda and Zach lost, and why Davon and uh, Jose lost? It came down to the same thing. Uh, no, I do not know. If if you look carefully, both teams, both Davon and Jose, and Amanda and Zach. It's the same medallion that didn't fall. Mm -hmm. And all the medallions were hanging from like a thinner string. Okay. And in all the shaking that Zach and Amanda did early on, mm -hmm. the medallion closest to her ended up looping around the rope. Oh. So it, like the large rope. So it lost its slack. Okay. So the way that they would have had to win it was like take the big rope, the pirate rope, spin it like you would like a jump rope mm -hmm. until the medallion swung off. Ah, like okay. Or ask production to undo it. But that's the problem. If you go back and look closely, it's the same medallion for both teams. And there's no shaking it loose because it was wrapped, the string was wrapped around. Yeah. That's the problem. That's how... Um, Corey and Devin come back from their 7-2 to two deficit and knock them out. And they also got off to a slow start against Jose and Davon. They did. They did. Right? But in both cases, both teams got tripped up by that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, so, it was crazy comebacks for uh, Devin and, and Corey for sure. And, you know, this completely changes the dynamic of the game. Yeah. Totally. Um, also, to and let's talk. About, also, to Polly has someone else that he's gonna fake fight in the house in the redemption house. Too, yeah, right. Yeah, he's gonna fake fight Zach. Yeah, and I gotta say, Zach's nose looked disgusting after. Oh yeah, after, like immediately after the competition, it looked terrible. Oh yeah. Um, I have some questions for you though. Okay. In your mind, where do Corey and Devin now slot in compared to the rest of the house? Because, like, early on in the season, we had said that Joss and Sylvia, and especially Tony and Amanda, were the teams to beat. Obviously, Tony and Amanda are gone. Zach, in Zach, your mind, 
sorry, Zach and Amanda are gone, right? Sorry, Zach and Amanda are gone. Um, in your mind, how are Corey and Devin as like if you put the remaining people in the redemption or in the main house? Where in your mind are they in the power rankings? I think it's two after Bananas and after Bananas and Tony. Hmm. I would say they're now the team to beat. I agree with you in terms of competition. Bananas and Tony are stronger. Mm -hmm. But Corey and Devin are more popular. True. Like, they have a stronger, they have a bigger alliance. And, like, at this point, like, Cara Maria, Marie, Johnny Bananas, and Tony, it's just down to their two teams in their alliance, unless someone comes back from the Redemption House. Yeah. And, and like, I do believe that it's going to be Polly and Natalie coming out of the Redemption House. Yeah. But Corey and Devin have the Young Bucks Alliance and although Devin is not a Lavender Lady, they love him. <laughs> like and, and, and furthermore, I mean, Marie's been on the show, on this show, on You Killed It, and she said that she's loved Devin. <laughs> and this is my follow-up question. Who is the most popular player in the game now? In the main house? I have no idea. I would argue it's Devin. Okay. Because as far as I can tell, everyone likes Devin except for Johnny Bananas. No, that's fair. The only person who I think comes close in terms of popularity is Tony. Yeah. No, I could see that. I could definitely see that. I think Which brings me to the the breakup fight at the end of the competition where Johnny, Tony, Zach, Amanda, Shane are all arguing. <laughs> And Shane makes the point that everyone actually really likes Tony. That the only reason why they have an issue with the team is Johnny Bananas, which I believe. Of course, yeah. I think Tony's got a really strong social game. Yeah, I think 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 it's a thing where, you know, I think we all knew that already. And it just comes down to what we were talking about before. Do you want to go in against Johnny Bananas and Tony? That's all it comes down to. So, yeah, it'll be super interesting to see going forward how that plays out, because it's cool that you guys want to vote for him. But now that you don't have Davon and Jose on your side, it's going to be one of your teams that has to take them out. Yeah. And they're not going to pick Devin and, and Corey. No, they're not. No, they're not. I mean, it. I mean, a factor of having such a big alliance is that it just great it like uh creates better odds of you winning the competition and getting the power vote Mm -hmm. and obviously if you get the power vote it's easier to just vote someone in safely yeah but yeah i do think i do think i mean obviously this is a huge shift in who has the power in the game but i think Corey and devin suddenly became the team to beat. I also don't think they're going to have a lot of problems with each other. Like no. I don't think they're going to self-destruct. Definitely. I'm waiting to see, though, how this all plays out. There's going to be more fallout between Zach and Amanda. I found a lot of Amanda's tweets last night super interesting, which I disagree with a lot of them because I just don't see it. And, hey, maybe I'm wrong. So, hey, if you're listening, let me know that I'm, that I'm wrong because I don't get it. But Amanda says... This is Zach punishing me for being strong, for being female, and for having a better alliance in him. And of course, quote, the men. He'd rather give up than work with a woman. That's not a man. That's a fucking child. I don't, I didn't yeah. see it that way. I don't understand. I just don't get how you can think that if you're not doing the same thing that he's not doing, why can't you understand that? I don't understand how. Like, you think that he's bullying you when you're trying to do the exact same thing. Yeah. It's just weird. I, I agree. Um, and, like, I guess it's a product of their... Just their general dislike of each other. Mm-hmm. But, you know... It, in this very specific instance, I think they're both right. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think that's possible. Yeah, you can see both th- sides of it. I just think that 
Zach is right in this instance because at the end of the day, again, I think they're going to be at the bottom of the Lavender Ladies uh, food chain because of Zach's ties to Totem. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I don't know that. Just my opinion. Um, so what for you was the quote of the week? <laughs> um, it has to obviously go to Amanda who says <laughs> – Who's when in one of her arguments with Zach, she says, Why are you acting like a bad bitch? You ain't no bad bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I just found that funny and the way that she said it too, like it's just like it was so ridiculous. The whole thing was ridiculous. Their whole argument was ridiculous, but it was funny. Uh, I think for me it was early on in her argument, poolside with Zach. Mm-hmm. She says or Zach says um, I would put all the money in my bank account. I bet all the money in my bank account that Tony would never say my name. Yes. And Smashley goes, all two dollars? Burn. So terrible. Uh, I loved it. Um, who killed it for you this week? To me, Zach killed it. I'm with Zach. Oh. That's how firmly I'm, I'm, I'm with Zach here. And it's because, like, again, maybe I'm missing something, but – and Amanda was talking about how, you know, Zach's threatened to quit multiple times to get his way this season, which is stuff that we haven't seen. But she says that he kept trying to, like, bully her multiple times throughout this season just so that he would get his way. I don't know anything about that, right? I haven't seen any of that. But I like the fact that he was just a man of his word and – he said he wasn't going to say Tony's name. He wasn't going to be the one to put Tony in an elimination. And he would rather be a man of his word or a woman of his word. I'm not trying to be sexist here. But mm-hmm. he'd rather just, you know, all you have is your word. And he stuck by it. I respect that. Yeah. And I the other thing, too. too, is, right? You know, I know your people say that you're giving up a million dollars or however much it is. But. These guys aren't going anywhere. They're going to be on other seasons of this show. Like you're going to you're going to have another opportunity to win this. And all you're doing is building that bond going forward because other people are going to see what you are willing to do for your alliance. Yes. And, and you know, we bring this up all the time. But it's not like they're on this show for free. Exactly. And like, yeah, a million dollars goes a long way. But first of all, once a tax man gets to it, it's less than that. <laughs> Second of all, um, to your point, you kind of got to think about the long term longevity. Like it's in its way more worthwhile to be a regular on this show and just go deep. Yeah. Than necessarily to win a big one, but have everyone hate you. Mm-hmm. No, for sure. And my understanding is that they have some sort of equation worked out where the more shows, like the more episodes you've been on mm-hmm. in your total career, the more money you get for your appearance fee. Okay. So Johnny Bananas is the highest paid. Yeah. And so we're clear, I'm saying like, when they're signing their contracts to be on the show before the start of the season, the producers say, okay, Zach, you have been on 45 episodes of The Challenge and Champs vs. Stars. Therefore, you are in this category of pay scale. Yeah. Here's what you're going to get per episode for every episode that you appear on. Right? Yeah. Uh, which is, you know, now that I say it out loud, probably one of the reasons why they're doing the Redemption House Yeah, is so that they can say to people like, hey, even if you get eliminated in the first episode, you're going to hang around for a minimum of five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it makes sense. Right? It's probably how they make up for um, how they now often eliminate like five or six teams off the hop every season. But anyway, I digress. So it's not like Zach is broke, yeah. despite Ashley's claims. 
No, it's true. It's true. What about you? What did what did you pick? I gotta go with Devin. Okay. And I'll, I'll I will say, I mean, really, if you look at screen time, Corey and Devin weren't on for that long. But I think that Devin had a real breakout season last season. Mm-hmm. I really do believe that he is the most popular person in the house. And I think he's got himself a great partner in Corey, a, a new and focused Corey, yep. who will be less distracted by these females yep. because he has a female back at home, his daughter, that he's concerned with. Mm-hmm. And Johnny Bananas is shook to see him. <laughs> It'll be super and, interesting to see how that dynamic works itself out. Oh, yeah. And significantly... Don't forget, Devin was supposed to be Johnny's partner to start the season. Yes. And although it's unfortunate circumstances that led to Devin not being able to partner with Johnny, I if I were Devin, I would much rather be partnered with Corey than with Johnny. Yeah. Right? The numbers, just your day-to-day happiness. Like, I would rather deal with Corey's goofy ass for and like have to make conversation with yeah. Nelson and Hunter and all yeah. their young bucks nonsense I'd much rather deal with that and uh, to your point from earlier this episode it's a huge advantage to miss out on like two thirds of the season yeah oh definitely definitely right? and, and I'm like, being honest I, do, I don't think that's fair at all for that strong of a team I don't think yeah, that's fair. Probably not. Probably not. Um, I I mean personally, I really I like the mercenaries twist that they like take the spot in the house. Mm-hmm. I do like that twist. Mm-hmm. But I don't like it just lengthens the season. Also true. Yeah, the which we don't need between this and the redemption house. We don't need it. Agreed. Totally agree. Totally. Agree. Um, I will say that the feedback online from this episode was huge. Okay. Um, Big You Killed It fan, Raven Ramsey, messaged me directly Mm -hmm. to tell me that she re-watched this episode like three or four times. Okay. Because she enjoyed it so much. People, I mean, you already alluded to Amanda and Zach being really outspoken on Twitter. Shane explaining that when people say friends in the house they mean alliances yep um and this is the sort of thing that we have been waiting for yeah right like this is a a real game game episode yeah it was all about the politics although i will say for me personally i still like the episode to have more challenges in them oh yeah 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 i i agree um but uh, is that all we have this week? Should we tell people where they can find us on social media? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, well, Sheldon, where can they get you on the Soch? Uh You can find me on Twitter at Shell Alexander, on Instagram at Sheldon Alexander, and shout out to the people that are on YouTube liking and subscribing there as well to the You Killed It podcast. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at J. Chidley Hill. Um, the usual warning is this week I'm covering quite a bit of hockey. The most important season in Canada. So uh, if you're not a hockey fan or if you're not a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, you have my apologies that you're going to see so much of me <laughs> tweeting about the Leafs. But I got to. It's my very difficult job. And I would like to apologize for my voice and lack of energy. I'm sorry for uh, being sick. We will your, be better. Your next sexy, time. sexy voice. I'm out of it right now. No, you're doing great. You're doing great. Playing hurt. Playing hurt. Uh, yeah, all the greats played hurt, Sheldon. Um, until next week, though, this was You Killed It. You killed it. That See, actually hurt. Got through the you.
that oh happened. no <laughs> I was thinking, like, should I do the you killed it? 